Howdy friends, this is going to be part two of lowering my 1949 Ford. The first part, we lowered the rear end four inches. If you haven't seen that yet, you know, pause the video, head on over to that one and check her out. And on uh, this part, we're going to be lowering the front end down. A couple of years ago, I was poking around on Facebook Marketplace and happened across these. Uh, so these are two inch dropped uprights and two inch drop coils. And uh, I think these are from Shoebox Central. I talked to them on the phone and uh, they think it's theirs. I also went ahead and uh, ordered some uh, new front end bushings from them. I've got uh, some two inch drop shocks, some coil insulators, and a ca camber kit that I painted black. So I'm gonna take some measurements here, see where we're at, and then get this thing up in the air and pull the wheels off. Looks like uh, about centered right here on the wheel to the uh, bottom edge of the fender here. We're at 27 and a half, I'll call it. So after this, we should be sitting at 23 and a half. I've got it up in the air, got the wheels popped off, and I started disassembling a little bit too. First, I unbolted the sway bar. Um, I have a 49. So mine is held on by this frame bracket here. And then there's another little bracket that goes right here on the control arm. If you have a 50 or a 51, you're just gonna have a bracket here and another one on your control arm. And your sway bar is gonna be shaped a little bit differently. I also removed this tie rod end. Uh, it's very simple. Just need to take the nut off and then use a pickle fork to separate this from the steering arm right here. Now we're ready to remove the shocks. Uh, there's just a nut top and bottom. I'm gonna take this one off and then on the bottom, I'm actually just gonna remove the entire shock mounting bracket. Next, we're gonna work on getting this coil spring out of here. Uh, I've got a chain wrapped around the spring going to the lower control arm just to make sure it doesn't go anywhere. And uh, we're gonna take this floor jack here, slide it underneath and support the lower control arm right here, roughly. I'm gonna have to adjust it. And then disconnect the lower control arm from the frame. Got those bolts out and now we are ready to pull our spring out. Uh, make sure you pound those bolts out. It's gonna make your life a heck of a lot easier. New bolts are cheap. I, you probably don't wanna reuse your 70 year old bolts anyway. And I'm not sure if you guys saw that or not, but when I took the last bolt out, the lower control arm did pop out of place a little bit. All right, uh, let's uh, lower it down and take the spring out. And just like that, you have safely removed your spring. There we go. Next, we're gonna pop the old brake line off. Someone's already rounded it off for me, so we're going to have to use the old vice grip. Okay, there's the 
There's that. Got the clip loose. Drop the line down, and we are ready to remove our front suspension. Next part's pretty easy. Uh, just take this nut off and then run this bolt all the way out. There's nothing holding it in anymore, it's just kind of floating. So grab your favorite pry bar and uh, work it out. Come on. Now we're going to try and get this upper control arm out of here and it's sort of a two-person job unfortunately if you're like me you're only one person so we're going to try and get it out through the engine bay see if that works so we're going to sneak a wrench in here under this cross member get it on the nut i think that's on there And then sneak the impact down from the top and run the nut out and run the bolt out. Got the right one out. I'm going to do the left one now. I had to switch to a adjustable wrench that was a little bit shorter. So I have more room to move it around and get it lined up. It's uh, kind of hard to hold the camera on and the wrench and the impact at the same time. So I'll set the tripod up this time so you guys can see. Got this guy out and uh, got our frame ready to get cleaned up and painted. I think the other side was a little bit harder. Um, I definitely get uh, an adjustable wrench. You can also kind of sneak it in the uh, spring pocket there and get at one of the nuts. I'd try that too if you're having trouble. Uh, I don't know what the V8 guys do, uh, cause it was pretty tight just with the inline six. So if you got a V8, uh, good luck. Last night we got the frame all cleaned up and undercoated and now it's time to start taking a look at the front suspension. So everything right here actually came with the used lowering kit that I bought and uh, I cleaned it up a while ago and painted everything. Um, just figured it'd be nice to kind of take a look at everything and talk about some of the rubber components. So. Right here, uh, you can see the top sway bar is for a 49, and this lower sway bar is for a 50 to 51. Uh, both of these take 5 8 inch uh, sway bar bushings. Um, a lot of companies are selling just half inch ones, or they're listing half inch ones for 49 to 51 Fords. Um, one company told me to buy these and drill them out to 5 ace, and uh, that's impossible. The drill bit just kind of flexes, or the rubber just flexes around the drill bit. So I went to Eckler's and bought these. These are for a 52 to 53 Ford, and they're the right size and uh, the right shape. Um, so those are the sway bars. Next we have our steering linkage. Uh, right here we have the, well... Here's the outer tie rod. Here's the inner tie rod. Our drag link, and the other tie rod. And this is what's called the idler arm. And this is the idler arm bracket that bolts to the frame. Uh, we'll take a look at those in a minute. 
Um, so you can tell if your tie rods have been replaced because the factory ones actually have the FOMOCO stamped into them, which is pretty neat. And your factory little bushings have a Ford F on it and the part number. Uh, these Dennis Carpenter ones do not have that. I actually had to buy uh, two sets of these Dennis Carpenter ones because nobody sells a bushing or a, a tie rod end boot for your drag link here. So I'm using a, a tie rod end boot for, for that. Um, let's see. So these outer tie rods are pretty cheap. These inner ones are kind of more expensive. I would actually check eBay if you're looking for some. You can get uh, NOS ones or aftermarket NOS ones. Um, drag links. Pretty much everyone is out of stock of drag links. Um, except for eBay. Check eBay. But uh, AutoZone actually has a rebuilding service for these. So if you bring these into AutoZone, they can get them rebuilt for you. Um, what else? Oh, yeah. So, um... Upper control arm, lower control arm. Now is when you want to cut your bump stop down. These were already cut because this kit was used. Um, here's my spindle and my dropped upright and the steering arms. Um, these are the upper bushings that go on the steering arm here. This is the one that I removed. As you can see, it's a little bit flared out and uh, looks a little bigger. And here's the Dennis Carpenter replacement. Um, this does not fit. I tried getting it on there. I looked online. A lot of other people had problems with them. Uh, they suggest kind of stretching them out and uh, squeezing these over this and just letting them sit. If you want to try that, go ahead. I'm just going to reuse my old bushings. And then here is the new lower bushings that I have. Um, I already replaced the driver's side. Those go on fine. So that's what we're going to use. And I was actually going to replace um, this bushing, this one, the ones up here. But uh, those are all in pretty good shape. So I'm just going to leave them. I didn't really want to take all of that apart. Also, earlier I showed you these springs. I thought they were two inch lowering springs, but they are the same height as my stock ones. So I've got some lowering springs from Western Chassis on order, and they should be here pretty soon. I've got three idler arms here. Uh, this one came out of the car, and I think it's been replaced at some point. This one came with my lowering kit. I think that is an original. And then I've got an NOS one here. Uh, so here's the one that came out of the car. As you can tell, the threads are in really good shape. Uh, this is what wears out. Uh, this is left-hand thread, and it basically the steering kind of rotates back and forth on that. Um, as you can see, this one's starting to get worn out. That's what I think this is an original. Um, this bushing is a little bit bigger, too. Here's the one that came out of the car. This one's a little bit smaller. And also, I wanted to point out, see these threads? These are not very deep. They're super shallow. Um, I thought this was worn out and my drag link and everything, but after looking at my NOS one, they're the same. So yeah, if, you're, um, if you want to upgrade, which is actually what I would recommend doing if yours is worn out, there's a guy on YouTube who is upgraded to a modern style idler arm using an AMC Concord part. I will uh, put a link to that down below, and uh, I would actually check that out. It's probably about the same cost as just buying a new one of these. Now we're going to work on putting stuff back on the car. So first up, we're going to start with our caster kit from Shoebox Central. I've painted mine black, but uh, this mounts right here, right where your old upper control arms would mount. Uh, they've got these little bolts that go in here. And they're a pain in the butt to install, just like removing the upper control arms was. But uh, the bolt drops in there, and then your upper control arm will bolt to this. And uh, that's how you adjust your caster. 
Okay, caster kit is installed. Uh, like I was saying before, it's super difficult to get at these nuts right here. Um, took me a while to get them threaded on by hand. And then I, I used a short adjustable wrench to sneak in there and hold them in place while I torqued them down. I torqued these to 50 foot pounds. Uh, so next we're gonna grab our upper control arm, put it in here like so, and bolt it like this. And then make sure you don't forget these little spacers that come with the kit. And uh, they go right there. So I'm gonna put that in and torque that to 50 foot pounds too. Actually, uh, I told you the wrong information there. It's actually about 70 foot pounds. Uh, if you don't have one of these factory service manuals, highly recommend getting one. I've also got a Dennis Carpenter catalog out here. They've got some nice illustrations. And uh, it's pretty tight trying to get in there to torque the bolts. Uh, you're going to want a 3 8 drive mid-length impact socket. And uh, I've also got a 3 8 drive uh, torque wrench right here. Now that that's in, we can work on the lower control arm. You're going to want to bolt this up to the cross member and torque those bolts to 50 foot-pounds. We got that in. Now we're ready for our dropped upright. Uh, like I said before, we're using the old bushings. They go like that and uh, like that. Pretty simple. Toss that in and torque everything to 70 foot-pounds. I was hoping my new coil springs were going to be here by now, but they're not. So I'm going to get the steering linkage in there and, uh, well, hope the coils show up soon. I didn't explain it very well in the last clip, but I only bolted the upper control arm to the top of the upright. Uh, we'll bolt the lower control arm to the bottom of it later on once we get our coil spring. And then here you can see me reinstalling our steering linkage. Um, I'm bolting the idler arm bracket to the frame. And then the other side of the drag link gets bolted to the pitman arm. Okay, it's two weeks later. My springs finally showed up. And uh, it's time to install them. Um, flat side of the spring goes up. Put your insulator on. And then... Oops, want to shove it up in here get it lined up have your jack ready line that up and okay that's lined up so pull this out keep jacking it up you also want to make sure the tail end of your spring is lined up in your uh, lower control arm. And now we're about ready to put our bolt through and have our bushings on there. I think something is bent on my car, on this side at least, because uh, the old lower control arms were kind of mangled. And the sway bar mounts are a little bit mangled. And um, this side, I've already mocked it up once. This is kind of tight against right here. Driver's side was perfect. And uh, I don't know, this side's just a little bit tight. So I'm gonna have to kind of force it in. Um, can you even, you can't really see what I'm talking about. Let's look at that. Here we go. Uh, so you can see super big gap right there. Nothing right there. Um, then you just kind of pop these rubber bushings on here. This one, it's very hard to get on. This one was easy on the other side, but now it's gonna be hard. So let me get those on and uh, we'll get everything bolted together. Well, I got it in there. Had to sacrifice a little bit of paint right here from the pry bar, but it's in, it'll work. I really wish I had filmed the driver's side actually, cause that lined up perfectly. But uh, we got it in there. Just gotta run this in here, torque this to 80 foot pounds, torque the nut to 80 foot pounds and put the cotter pin in and then we'll be good.
Let's take a look at these shocks real quick before I bolt them in. Here's the stock ones. Um, they mount to this bracket and then this bracket bolts up to the lower control arm. Here's another one that I painted before I had the shocks. And yep, they just mount up like that. Here's our two inch drop shock. Um, these were KYBs, you can kind of see the logo there. And somebody ground the part number off and just left it bare metal. Not really happy with that. I'm gonna have to put some paint on that. And honestly, I'm not very impressed by these. Uh, these ears don't really extend out far enough. When it's bolted into the lower control arm, the bolt looks like this. So you're gonna need to use washers, an undersized washer, because the right size washer actually comes in contact with the lower control arm. Um, I found that M10 washers are going to work the best, and when you have it bolted up in the car, it's going to look like that. So, I've already got the driver's side in. Let's do the passenger one now. I got the top bolted in. That goes in just like the stock shock. And here's the bottom mount. It's not perfectly centered, but you can see kind of these ears don't really go far enough, and if you use too big of a washer, you won't be able to uh, get the bolt in there. All right, uh, we have most of the lowering components bolted up. The last thing we need to do is put our sway bar in and our drop steering arms. So I'm converting my car to disc brakes. I don't know if I said that already, but you're gonna see me bolting these to the disc brake conversion brackets instead of my drums. And uh, I'm going to cover the disc brake conversion in another video. So part of that video will be mixed with this one. But uh, yeah, please subscribe, actually, just so you don't miss it. So I'm going to get this bolted up and toss the sway bar in. <laughs> Stands pulled. Let's see how it looks. Oh, I like it. I shut the hood for the full effect, and uh, I am super happy with how this turned out. This looks amazing. Um, I just grabbed the tape measure and took a few measurements and uh, we are at 24 inches in the front now so that gave us about a three and a half inch drop 
and the rear is sitting about half an inch lower than the front. I am incredibly happy with how this turned out. Um, if this video helped you at all, or if you liked the car, please give the video a thumbs up and uh, consider subscribing. Next time, we're going to get those brakes figured out and take this thing on a test drive. So thanks for watching, and I'll see you in the next one.